The end draws near and my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand reasons and forever So worship his holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name Thank you Forever and ever The sun comes up it's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes
and welcome to Online Church at C3 Thoreau. We are so glad that you joined us. If you're new and new today, then please jump on the chat function, tell us your name, let us know where you're listening from, and we would love to get to know you. If you've been around for a while, then you know what to do. We love to read your comments. It's always a great opportunity to encourage the church while you're listening along with the rest of us. We also want to let you know that there's an opportunity to request prayer. There is a team waiting, so just click on the request prayer button and a window will open and you can chat with someone. If there's anything that you, that you need, please do reach out to us. Please remember that Connect Groups are happening this week and they are back face to face, well most of them are. And of course we will be socially distancing. But now is a really great time to get involved. So if you are not in a Connect Group, please click the Connect button and we will get you sorted with one. It's a great place to pray, it's a great place to have your faith strengthened and it's a great place to go and encourage other people. Well, we are in the middle of a series called This Is Us and so far it has been so encouraging to hear all about the church and all about what Jesus wants to do through us. So I encourage you to press in, to lean into the service today, to worship God and to just expect that He's going to do something wonderful and amazing in your heart. Enjoy the service, church. Rock of ages, abide in me, hunger for your company. I plead the blood of Calvary, rock of ages, abide in me. When shadows fall and clouds collide, tempers form before my eyes. I call your name and you calm the seas. Rock of ages, I'm by the Almighty love, your sacrifice, redemption's born, you paid the price. To Jesus Christ, we bow the knee, rock of ages, abide in me.
Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, He is my song. And let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, He is my song. You are good. reading Psalm 20 and it's all about God's victory, that God is a victorious God. I'm going to read from verse 6. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. 
So today, if you are in need of saving, if you are in need of His power and His, His mighty hand in your life, I would encourage you to pray along with me. Lord, I pray right now for every single person that is tuning in to online church. I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them with your might. I pray, Lord, that where people need provision, that you will bring miraculous provision. I pray that you would bring comfort into the lives of those who need it. And I declare joy over every single person that is tuning in. Father, be near to us today. We thank you, Lord, that when we draw near to you, that you draw near to us. And you promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, you are mighty, you are powerful, you are victorious and you are able. And you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we could imagine or dream of. And Lord, let every person listening know that in their heart this week. Amen. Hey everyone, hope you're well. Simon here. Uh, I've been just asked by Brendan to share some thoughts around communion this morning. So if you have some wine or juice, depending on what time of day it is, and some bread, if you want to get that ready, now would be a good time to do that. So I've been thinking about the Last Supper and those words that Jesus spoke, do this in remembrance of me. And then looking at the context of the Last Supper happening within the the bigger context of the Passover feast uh, and festival. The fact that the Passover for the Jewish people was um, so symbolic and a lot of it was based around remembering, remembering the blood on the doorposts, remembering the angel of death passing over, remembering being released out of Egypt and then being chased down again by Pharaoh and then obviously this huge moment of the, the Red Sea parting. Remembering God providing manna in the morning and quail in the evening and water from rocks and pillars of uh, smoke and cloud and fire and all that sort of stuff. And just recalling all of that sort of um, uh, the history of that and the imagery of that. And as I looked into it, the, the word for remember in the Hebrew is a difficult word to really define. And it seems as though most people, translators, see that as being intense focus that allows us to be, uh, to, that allows us to have our life shaped by it. So I was thinking then of Jesus saying, do this in remembrance of me. And interesting that uh, within the context of that meal, he doesn't refer to lamb. And I would imagine lamb was actually part of the, the, the actual food that they would have eaten at that time. Um, because of its significance, and yet he doesn't refer to the lamb, he refers to the bread and the wine. And he says, do this in remembrance of me. We tend to think, well, at least I do, we, I, I think of remembering his death and resurrection, but when he was talking to the disciples at this point, obviously he hadn't died and he, hasn't, he hadn't resurrected. And no doubt that's something that they will recall later on and that they will reflect on. But I just wonder if in that moment, in that room, when he took bread and he took wine, what were some of the things that were coming to the memory of the disciples uh, about Jesus and his life and his time with them? Taking the bread, was it a case of, did it recall for them something about uh, him feeding 5,000? Or when he was teaching them to pray, give us today our daily bread. Thinking about the wine, uh, what came to their memory? Was it the first miracle that he performed, turning water into wine and allowing this celebration to continue to go on and, and Jesus just loving and laughing in that moment? Was it uh, him talking about being the true vine? All those sort of things. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is this morning as we take our communion, while it is so important to remember and reflect on his death and resurrection and the sacrifice that he made that's so huge, and the idea of we are now part of a new exodus, that he is the new Moses, as it were, and, and uh, we're not being delivered out of slavery in Egypt, but we are being delivered out of slavery from sin and its consequences and uh, its curse. And so while it is important to remember that, I feel like maybe it's good to also not just reflect on his death, but also his life and, this, and allowing the remembering of his life and the, the man that he was, allowing that to shape us 
and to be something that we model our lives on ourselves. So hopefully that makes sense and forgive me if it doesn't. But uh, now would be a time to take your bread, that's not your bread, that's your juice. Take your juice and that's your bread. Uh, and I'll just say a prayer and you can take that at a time that's appropriate for you. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you're a God of love and grace, that you're a God who encourages us to remember who you are, what you have done, the promises that you have made for us. And uh, we just ask that as we take this um, communion this morning, that it would shape our hearts and our lives to live and love more like you and to love and adore you more and more. We just thank you for the fact that we can have this um, as something that we can uh, be reminded of, but also something that brings us together in spirit. And so we just, uh, we just offer this to you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Hey, church. Well, we're going to come around our time of giving, and it's my privilege uh, just to encourage us in that space today. I'm going to read today from 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 12, uh, a particular verse that Paul shares. And just to give a little bit of context, the whole of chapter 8 of 2 Corinthians is it's absolutely brilliant because uh, Paul's talking to the church in Corinth um, about some giving that they'd done prior and the commitment that they'd made to their giving and just highlighting, um, I suppose, the heart behind giving and why it's important and what it means for the church. Now, it's so um, applicable still for us today. And this is what Paul writes in this verse and reading here from verse 12. Paul writes, For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. And, you know, I just was uh, encouraged by that myself and during the week as I was just thinking about our giving. And I want to encourage you with that as well. It's about our willingness to give and to give from what we have, not from what we don't have. It's not as though our giving to God needs to be a fairy tale idea of, oh, one day if I hit the jackpot, Lord, Lord, I'd give to you then, or if I won that $80 million Powerball, then I'd give so much to your church, Lord. No, no, it's not about that. It's actually about what we already have in our hands and then our willingness to give from that space. So we don't need to feel guilty or condemned or compare ourselves to someone else in a different situation. And for me, that's what's so brilliant about the idea of the tithe that's talked about throughout the Bible, our 10% that we give to God, our first fruits that we give to God, because then it's based upon what we have, uh, not a set amount that if we don't have it, we have to feel guilty. Each of us being able to give from what we have um, is the encouragement that Paul's giving and the willingness with which we give it. So as we give today, and whether it's online for you and you can click on that button, whether it's direct debit that you've set up electronically or however else you're deciding to give today, I want to encourage you, hey, give from what you have and give with a willingness. That's the important element of our giving to God. God bless. G'day church, welcome. It is week three of our series, This Is Us, and today I get to share on Christ's body. What am I talking about with that? Am I talking about his physical body, or am I talking about the body of Christ, the church, you and I? Six months ago, I got to preach a message on the body of Christ, and six months on, I get to do it again. I'm going to take a different take uh, on it this time. But I did start off my sermon six months ago by saying I love the church. I love the resilience of the church. I love how Jesus takes us on an adventure to use our gifts to serve each other. And that has not changed in the last six months. In fact, I think it's got even deeper. The last few months have been tough, not being able to meet face to face. I've missed that, and I know many of you have missed that as well. As much as the online experience is pretty amazing being able to be in your own home, sometimes we can get distracted by the washing that needs to go out or the meal we're preparing or the kids running around or whatever it might be for you. So hopefully today in the next few minutes, you're able to stop, pause, relax and just take in what God's got to say to you today. 
Well, I've got three parts of my sermon this morning, and it's going to be fairly quick. I don't want it to drag on. I just want to be really punchy for you today so we can get straight to the point, and hopefully that you will be able to see your part in the body of Christ, the church, you and I. So my first point of my message today is the body of Christ is united. I've got this verse out of Colossians 3, 12, 16. You'll see it in the chat in a moment. And it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive each other. If any of you have a grievance against one another, forgive as the Lord has forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you will call to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell amongst you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. As I said, it's been a really tough time for the body of Christ. Not being able to meet together face to face, it has been tough. And I know uh, for for many of uh, our younger kids, it's been a very strange time for them, not seeing their friends in kids' church. For our youth, not being able to catch up and hang out. And even for us as adults, uh, not seeing each other has been really tough. Even though we're, we're not sitting together, doesn't mean we're not united. doesn't mean that we're not together in spirit. One of the things that I have loved over the last few months is our chat feed. And if you're in the chat right now uh, saying hello to each other, I'm so glad you're doing it. In fact, I love some of the people in our church that we never hear from. Those ones that are really quiet on a Sunday morning or evening, that don't say much, they come to church and they go. But yet in the chat, they seem to have found their voice. And I love the wisdom and input that they've been sharing. In fact, I think since these restrictions have happened, we seem to be more united than I think we ever have before. And I know there's lots of changes happening for our church, but even with those changes, the unity that I'm getting to see is absolutely beautiful, and hopefully you're getting to see that as well. In fact, one of the highlights that I've had in online church is a couple of people who have been engaging in online church in a way that I I never thought. I never thought that they had this wisdom because I never heard them really speak. And I want to shout out to a couple of you that know who who you are, that in church you say nothing, but in the online chat you say, and I want to encourage you to keep doing that. The unity of the Spirit is really important. And for churches, we thrive on unity. When we're all moving in the one direction, we are unstoppable. But when we move in all different directions and we've got all our own agendas, it's a complete mess. And I know personally over the last few years, we've all seen that, where agendas uh, run and it, it's just not a great experience. But yet when we, we, we follow and we follow the Spirit and we stick with unity, it's amazing what God has done over the last 12 months at C3 through all. And I'm so glad You've been part of that. My second point is the body of Christ is called. Romans 12, 4 to 8 says this, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophecy, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. 
If it is serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then do it generously. And if it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. You have been called. You have a gift. You may have a number of gifts. And that gift isn't just for you. It's actually for the body of Christ. The way I, 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 I've been seeing how God uses gifts in the last few years, it's like God resources what he needs in his church. And so if you're not active in your gift at the moment, unfortunately, the whole body misses out. In Romans 12 there, it just says that we are many parts but one body. And you've been given a gift. You've been given different gifts according to the grace shown to us. And each member belongs to the other. So we belong to each other. Your, our gifts belong to each other. And I want to encourage you today, like I did uh, six months ago, if you are not active in your gift, I want to encourage you to start. And start small. You don't have to go and save the world today. But if you've got the gift of hospitality and you've got no idea how to, to use that gift, in the body of Christ, I encourage you, start small. It might be as simple as making a meal for someone. Perhaps you've got the gift of encouragement, and what a time for those people that have that gift of encouragement. It's time for us to get encouraging each other. For those people that you may not have seen in the uh, online church in recent weeks, why not shoot them a message and say, hi, how are you going? Give them encouragement. I love that gift of encouragement. Uh, it, it is just so special. I know for me, when that encouragement comes through, that you go, wow, that's not just from that person, but it's actually from God the Father himself. Perhaps you've got a gift to teach or to lead. I encourage you again, start small. It doesn't have to be a massive thing. If You, you may not have the confidence or you might be a bit shy to use your gift. I encourage you to start. Starting today is so, so important because we don't know when these restrictions are going to lift. Perhaps it could be next month. It could be six months. Who knows? I, I wish I did. But what I do know is that you are resourced today with the gifts God's given you. And perhaps you're, this is your first time at a church service. And you're thinking, what am I talking about? This is not a gift that we unwrap and we go, wow, thanks for the present. It's a gift, it's a, it's a skill, a talent that God specifically gives to each of us to use to encourage and build up the body of Christ. So today, if you're not active in your gift, start small. And if you don't know what your gifts are, I encourage you to jump online after the service and uh, Google um, uh, a gift survey. Um, so spiritual gifts um, and what you'll see is there'll be a whole heap of tests uh, that you can take to help show you what gifts you might have. And if you take a test and it doesn't resonate with you, maybe take another one that might be a little different. Uh, because once you know it, 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 it does speak to you. You go, oh, that is me. Has someone been following me around? Like, how do they know this about me? And so I encourage you to do that today. And if you're a teenager watching right now, that includes you. God has gifted you. And even though you're young, doesn't mean that you don't get away with not using your gifts. The body of Christ needs you today as well. So if you're a young person here watching, I want you to go. If you haven't done your spiritual giftings, go and check that out. And uh, I know that the, the youth team uh, will encourage you in finding your gift today. In fact, more than ever, we do need to use our gifts in these times. So I can't say it any louder than do it. Just do it today. And my last point today, church, is this. The body of Christ is loving. In Romans 12, 9 through to 16, which is an extension of where we just finished off, it says this. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. 
Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Serving the Lord, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position and do not be conceited. I love that we as a church are a loving people. And I know in, in times gone past that may not have been the case. And I'm not talking necessarily about our church, but for people that in the community have experienced church, sometimes they walk away feeling very unloved. But yet we're called to love. In fact, here's some stuff that Jesus says. Jesus says this in John 13, 34. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. It's not a suggestion. It's not a, well, you know, you you could love one another. It's an option. Um, It doesn't say, you know, it might be a positive choice in life to love one another. No, Jesus says you must love one another. And that can be hard. That can be hard. But it doesn't mean it's not good. Love one another. How does that look for you in your life? Perhaps maybe for you, you're a more judgmental person and to love someone means you have to lay down those judgments and just love them. Maybe you're the type of person that just doesn't want to connect with people because you're a bit shy. How do you show love? Maybe you are just a person with a full of energy and uh, and the way that you show love might be very different. But I want to encourage all of us today in how do we love. It goes on in the next verse of that where it says in uh, verse 35, but by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one and other. When we love each other, people come into the body of Christ and notice. There's nothing worse. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, when you you go and visit a church and something's off. You, You just know something's not right. And you can immediately tell that there's a lack of love in that, that, that place. I know for me, I've had that, and it, it, it feels so uncomfortable. I don't want that to be our church, our body of Christ. In Romans 12.10, it says, Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. That's a hard one. Because sometimes we have to get out of the way. We have to take the step sideways. Sometimes we have to make the first move. Sometimes we have to forgive. Love isn't necessarily an easy thing, but it is a good thing. It can be hard to do, but just because it's hard doesn't mean we don't try. What does a loving body of Christ look like? It's something that changes the world. And I love our church because I know people that have come into our church and I've just seen the love that we have for people, how we accept people, how they are. doesn't mean we say that that's how they've got to stay, but we love who they are. We love each person that comes and visits us. And so today, I encourage you to show some love. In these times of restrictions, how do you do that? Well, I'm sure all of you have a neighbor. Start there. Maybe it's the person across the road. Hey, young people, it might be as simple as I'm going to take the neighbor's bins in for them. What a way to show love on a rainy day. It doesn't have to be 
huge things. It's the little things that can change the world. So I encourage you today is to start showing love. Well, maybe this is your first time uh, here at Online Church or here with us at C3 Through All. I'm so glad you've joined us today. And you might be thinking, I just don't fully understand this message. But, but some of the things you've said today that Jesus has said has just rung true with me. Perhaps you've been in our church for years and today something has just caught you. Well, today I encourage you to pray a prayer that's coming up on the screen in just a moment. If today is your day to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, there's going to be a button that just pops up in the feed in the chat in just a moment. I'm going to ask you to click that button that you're saying yes to Jesus, that yes, you want to accept him as your Lord and Saviour. And we've got some team waiting right now for you to click that button. Once you've done that, it'll change to say request prayer. We want you to hit that request prayer button. We want to pray with you right now. It's such a special moment. Don't be scared. There's nothing to be scared about. In fact, it'll be the best decision you'll make in your life. So I encourage you right now, if that's you, click on that button. Our team is waiting to pray with you right now. And perhaps today your your gift is something that is um you just don't know what to do with, you don't know how to do that, and you want prayer for that. Our team's still here. We want to pray with you today. Or if there's anything else in life that you need prayer for, click on the live prayer button right now. If you're watching this offline uh, on our on online church platform, you can still go and click on the request prayer button. It'll send an email through to the team who will pray for you today. Thanks so much. I'm so glad I was, about, I was able to share this message with you again. Have a wonderful week. And uh, before we go, I just want to pray for you. Father God, I thank you for every person that's watching right now. And I ask if they aren't using their spiritual gifts that you have given them to help build your church, your body, I ask right now that you would give them that encouragement, that courage to step out and start. Father, if we find it hard to love, I ask that you would help us and give us opportunities today to do that. And Father, I thank you that you help us to be united. If unity is something that you struggle with right now, I pray right now that the, the Father will give you Jesus' peace. Jesus will give you the peace that you need today. So Father, I ask for peace to be given to those that are just struggling uh, right now with uh, not being unified or, or being uncertain. I ask for your peace today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Well, thanks for tuning in today, church. That was really great service. Um, I gleaned a lot and there was a lot of wisdom in there and I hope that you can apply that to your life this week. If you need anything, reach out to us, check out our website and we will see you next week. Bye.
see a savior on the hill hanging on the cross the son has done the father's will for us the wounds were deep his blood was red the written word that said that the lamb it would be slain for our sin Jesus I can't comprehend how you're the savior and my friend my heart says that it's true as mercy falls on me god the father and spirit sing my praises rise to worship you my heart roars for who you are let your will be done won't you let your will be done won't you let your will be done. I see the Savior on the hill, hanging on the cross. The Son has done the Father's will for us. Wounds were deep, His blood was red. The written word said that the Lamb it would be slain for our sin. Jesus, I can't comprehend how you're the Savior and my friend. But my heart says 